What's going on, people of Earth? It is Saturday afternoon, and we're getting ready to do a chuck roast. This is going to be a really easy recipe for a beautiful Saturday afternoon, last Saturday in February. Cannot believe this month is already gone by, y'all. Good gracious. They say the grayer you get, the faster the days go by. Anyway, watch us do this chuck roast. We're going to keep this video short. It does take a little bit of time, so don't think you can do this roast um, quickly. Um, you're going to you want to slow roast it so that it comes out nice and flavorful. All right, so of course we're going to start off with a chuck roast. That roast beef is probably about three pounds. Got a nice little bit of marbling, and that's kind of what you look for when you're looking for a roast, guys. You're looking for a roast that's got a lot of marbling in it because that means it's going to have a lot of flavor. We've already pre-cut up some onions, pre-cut up some red bell peppers. You'll see some green inside of it. This little green part was growing on the inside of one of these uh, red red bell pepper so it's pretty cool got some garlic you know a video i made last time i had my garlic out didn't even use it crazy all right we're gonna have some regular garlic powder some oregano some uh, midwest steak seasoning some himalayan salt some um ground mustard a little bit of white pepper um as our marinade we're gonna use a little bit of the um louisiana hot sauce some of the lemon juice some of the grape poupon and also we're going to use a little bit of paprika. We're going to brown this thing first. And then we're going to pop it in the oven. Alrighty, we're going to brown our meat for about two minutes per side here. So we've got this thing a little bit higher than uh, medium high or medium. We've got it right between medium and medium high. Two minutes per side. No more, no less. And guys, one thing that I left out. For my marinade, we are going to use a little bit of oil. Now, this is avocado, coconut, and safflower oil, safflower oil, but you can use olive oil as well, too. And we're going to use to make this marinade. Hold on a second. All right, we're going to use about a third of a cup of the oil. And it's a clear oil that has a high burning part point. We're going to use about the same amount of hot sauce here, Louisiana. All right, it's time to turn that thing over. That's been two minutes right there. Our timer's going off. All right, we're gonna turn this baby here. Oh yeah, look at that. Give it another two minutes. Pull some of those pieces over there. Another two minutes. We'll come back over to our knock the stuff down. Tracy, knock it down. All right, come back over to our, um, our marinade. I'm going to pour it in some in there. Okay, get a little bit of lemon juice. Lemon juice gives it a nice flavor and nice little clang. You don't need quite a third of a cup. Hey, that's about all in the bottle right there anyway, so I'm going to use no more of that. Then we're going to use about you know anywhere from a half about a third to a fourth of a cup of of mustard and that mustard really gives it a nice flavor y'all we're gonna mix that up now, let me find me a, a cool mixer try to find something that's not so loud you know what i mean and this is gonna go this is actually gonna go on the meat while you're cooking it right before you cook it just to kind of give it a little bit of flavor. So it'll be slow cooked into the sauce and into the seasoning. Okay. Alrighty, it's been another two minutes. We're gonna literally take it off the heat because we don't want it cooking anymore. So I've got that resting on one of those, um, those um, what's it called, heat, heat warmers or, you know, things that keeps your counter from getting burned. I can't think of the name of it right now, but let that cool off for just a second. Yeah, they say that thing is called a trivet. I, I never knew what it was called. Um, but it, it's the thing that stops um, the pan from burning the counter. Um, trivet, I guess, is, I guess that's, better, that's better than nothing. Heck, I don't know. Anyway, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to start seasoning our meat here. We're going to put... Some salt up there. This is Himalayan salt. We're going to put some mustard powder up there. I 
And you can be kind of gracious with that stuff here this time. We're going to put some white pepper up here. Right here? Yeah. My, my wife don't know I'm making a video. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so put the white pepper right there. We're going to put the thyme on this side here. Look at her laugh, laughing in the background. You got you got to like, love, uh, I can't even talk. You got to like live videos. I'm going to put some garlic powder. And I'm not overdoing it, y'all. I don't think I'm overdoing it. Because I am not. It's going to have a lot of flavor in it. And we're going to put some paprika in here as well, too. And what I do is I kind of rub that stuff in. Just kind of pat it in. And we'll do the same thing to the other side. Now I've got the baking pan warming in the oven. The oven's set for 300 degrees. So I'm going to take that baking pan out and I'm going to flip this side right here um, over um, so that we can season the other side. Also, what I did, guys, I sprayed it a little bit just so that that stuff will stick on it real well. And so that when we flip it on the other side um, in the other pan, that it'll stick up there as well and stay up there. All right, we're going to take this one here. And I've sprayed a little bit of cooking spray in that one. I'm going to take this one. Flip it over in there. You can hear it sizzling just a little bit here. Do the same thing as, where, as far as seasoning. Now, you guys have already seen that part, so I'm not going to show you that part. And I don't think I showed you putting me the Wild West grinder on this a little while ago either, but we can't forget about that. But we're not messing it up, guys. This thing is going to be good however you look at it. Put the last little part of paprika up here. You know, paprika is just peppers, right? Nothing special about it, but it's just it's just pe bell peppers. I didn't know that till the other day. Again, we're going to spray it just a little bit. Just a little bit, trying not to. You don't want to spray the spices off of it. Now, we're going to take our our vegetables here, and we're going to put them all along the edges here. No special way. Put some on top. This thing's going to taste good, y'all. So, so good. And I've got two, this is two onions cut up. Two large onions cut up. This thing's going to taste good. And we're going to take our bell peppers. The bell peppers are going to give it the sweetness. And we're just going to spread these bell peppers over this thing here. This is going to be so good, y'all. Now, if you had some potatoes you could put some potatoes in there as well because all these vegetables are going to be going to go on your dinner plate so whatever you serve with you're going to have these vegetables to go along with it now oops knock it over okay now we're going to put our sauce now you don't have to put the sauce up there you really do not But I've made it with it, and I've made it without it. And brother, sister, I'm telling you, with it, it tastes a whole lot better. All right, then we're going to put some aluminum foil or aluminum foil, as the Brits say. Cover it up. This pot is hot. Remember, because I just took it out of the oven. I put it in the oven, 300 degrees, and it should take about... Two and a half hours, guys. So we'll come back and check on it. At, at at the end of two hours, we want to take the foil off and let it cook on its own. My dumb in did it again. I left the garlic out. Well, it's fine. We don't have to put the garlic in there. Garlic, you know, it's got garlic powder on it, but I meant to put that in there and I didn't put it in there. It's too much to think about, too much to do. Still going to come out good. All righty, the beef's got about... About 15 more minutes before it's two hours, but I was just going to show you what I'm pairing this with. Pairing this with some um, yellow squash with some radishes and some um, 
onions cut up in there. We're sauteing that in some butter. And we're going to make some cream corn over here. Alrighty, y'all. It's been about two hours exactly. We're going to open this up here. See what we look like. And we're going to let this... Oh, yeah, it looks good. We're going to let this cook um, for about... 30 more minutes without um, having it in the um, foil. Oh, that looks really good, y'all. Doesn't that not look good to y'all? does to me. Move that to the side. Close it back up. All righty, y'all. It's been a, about two and a half hours, and we're just taking it out of the oven. It looks delicious. And I know it's going to be good. We're going to let that rest for about five minutes or so. Then we're going to put this thing together and we're going to have us some, some roast beef and some, uh, squash and onions and some cream corn. All righty. It's been about 10 minutes that I let this thing rest here, y'all. I'm trying to get a, a better view here. Oh, that's not so good. Let's get, let's go get a little closer. There we go. We're going to cut it. Just to kind of see what it looks like. Let me get a fork here. And I know it's going to look good, y'all. So there's no doubt about it. Look at that. Look at that. It looks good. It's cooked all the way through. Not. It's a good looking steak there. And it tastes delicious. Oh my God, it tastes delicious. So, we're going to serve this up. And we'll plate it and show it to you guys. And we'll catch you on the down low. There we go, y'all. Roast beef, squash and onions, and cream corn. Looks good. Going to be delicious. The meat's already good. I already tasted it. So, thanks for watching. Try it if you like it. Peace.